Hello and welcome back to the live coverage of theCUBE here live in Detroit, Michigan for KubeCon, our seventh year covering all seven years the Cube has been here. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, co-founder of theCUBE. I'm here with Lisa Martin, my co-host, and our new host, Savannah Peterson. Great to see you guys. We're wrapping up day one of three days of coverage and our guest analyst is Sarvi Chowal, who's the CUBE analyst, who's going to give us his report. He's been out all day, ear to the ground, in the sessions, peeking in, sneaking in, crashing them, getting all the data. Great to see you, Sarbeet, Lisa, Savannah. Nice Let's wrap this puppy up. I am so excited to be here. My first KubeCon with theCUBE, and being here with you and Lisa has just been a treat. Yeah. I can't wait to hear what you have to say in the, on the report side. And I mean, I have just been reflecting. It was last year's KubeCon that brought me to you. Yeah. So I feel so yeah. lucky. So much can change in a year, folks. You never yeah. know where you'll be, wherever you're sitting today. You could be living your dreams in just a few months. Lisa, so much has changed. I mean, just look at the past this year events. We're back in yeah. person. Yep. This is a big theme here. They're still wearing masks, although we can take them off of the cube. But mask requirement, tech has changed, conversations are up leveling, skill gaps still there. So much has changed. So much has changed. There's so much evolution and so much innovation that we've also seen. You know, we started out the keynote this morning, standing room only. Thousands of people are here. Even though there's a mask requirement, the community that is CNCF, KubeCon, is stronger than I, stronger than I saw it last year. This is only my second KubeCon. But the collaboration, what they've done, yeah. their devotion to the maintainers, their devotion to really finding mentors for mentees was really a strong message yeah. this morning. And, we heard and, a lot of that today. And it's going beyond Kubernetes, even though it's called KubeCon. I also call it Cloud Native Con, which I think will probably end up being the name because at the end of the day, the cloud native is scaling. You're starting to see the pressure points. You're starting to see where things are breaking, where automation is coming in, breaking in a good way. And we're going to break it all down. And again, so much going on. Again, I, developer is going to be in charge. Digital transformation, if you take it to its conclusion, then you will see that the developers are running the business. IT isn't a department, it's not serving the business, it is the business. If that's the case, everything has to change and we're, we're happy to have Sarbeet here with us. Cube analyst on the badge, I saw that, <laughs> with the press pass. Well, thank yeah, you. thanks for getting me the badge. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm here with you guys and... Um, well, you got a report, let's get into it. Yeah, you got, I don't you know, you let's got, hear what you got to say. Okay. Let's go. I'm excited. <laughs> Yeah, I went around, actually attended some sessions and, and with the analysts who are sitting in, in the media slash press, and I spoke to some people uh, at the, their booths, and the, there are a few, few patterns, uh, you know, which are, some are the exaggeration of existing patterns, and some are kind of new patterns emerging. So, things are getting complex in open source. There are a lot more projects, right? Uh, they have, the CNCF has uh, graduated some projects. Even after graduation, they're, they're exploding, right? Kubernetes is one of those projects which has graduated. And on that front, just a side note, the new projects which are entering the CNCF, there's a, we, we got to see that process and the three stages and all that stuff. I, I tweeted all day long. <laughs> if you want to know <laughs> what it is, you can look at my tweets. Um, but, but I will actually write right on that actually after uh, after the show ends uh, what what I saw there w these new projects need to be curated properly I think they need to be vetted there's a lot of noise in these projects there's a lot of overlap so the the work is cut out for CNCF folks by the way their sort of managerial committee or whatever you call that the the people who are leading it that I think they're doing their best, and they're doing a good job of that. And another thing, actually, I really liked in the morning's keynote was that a lot of women on the stage and minorities <coughs> represented. I loved it, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, believe me, I'm a minority, even though I'm Indian, but from <laughs> India, I'm a minority, so yeah. people who are Punjabi, they know that, I'm a minority. So I, I understand their pain and how hard it is to, to break through the yeah. ceiling and all that, so I love that part as well. Yeah. Um, the inclusivity another, is clear yeah. from day one. It's in the, it's in the DNA. I mean, they'll reject anything that and looks the like the opposite. And it's the representation too. I mean, it's not just that everyone's invited, it's they're celebrated. And yes. that's a very big difference. Yeah. It's, yeah. You see conferences offer discounts for women for tickets or minorities, but you don't necessarily see them put their money where their mouth is, actually yeah. recruit the right women to be on stage. Right. Something you know a little bit about, John. Diversity yes. brings better outcomes, <laughs> better product perspectives. The product is better with all the perspectives involved. 100%. It might go a little slower, 
maybe a little, <laughs> yeah, little debates, but it's all good. I mean, it's, to me, the better product comes when everyone's involved. I hope you didn't just imply that women would make slower. No, slower. I think John <laughs> meant like slower means a slower no, in, in more, adoption. More, more diversity creates diversity. more debate, yeah. and more the diverse, Bringing the diversity and into yeah, picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't debate take time. That's, that's that what, how good which groups is, which operate. Which is great, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, Take that mulligan back and say, hey, you know, <laughs> that's just, that's just it's going to go so much thing. faster <laughs> and better and cheaper. With that thought diversity, absolutely. Yes, well, you make better products faster yeah. because Everyone, you have yeah, a variety of perspectives. It. The bigger the group, there's more debate. Okay. More debate is key, but the key to success is aligning and yeah. committing. Absolutely. Once you have that, and that's what open source has been about oh, for God, yeah. Yeah. generations. That's been a huge theme of the show. <laughs> generations. All right, so, so just I know so, you have to add another, like, another important aspect. Uh, sort of um, observation, if you will, is that the security is, is paramount, right? Yes. Requirement, especially for open source. Uh, there was Huge a stat top. which was presented in the morning that 60% of the projects in, under CNCF have more vulnerabilities today than they had last year. So that was, that's shocking actually. It's a big jump. Uh, it's a big jump. Like, big jump means, jump, jump means like it can be from, from 40 to 60 or, or 50 to 60, but still, that percentage is high. What, what that means is that a lot more people are contributing. It's very uh, sort of dichotomic or ironic that we say like, oh, this project has 10,000 contributors. Is that a good thing, right? We do, do we know the quality of the, where they're coming from? Are there any back doors being you know, opened there? How stringent is the process of rolling those things which are being checked in into production, you know? Who is doing that? I've so wondered I, about that. Yeah. Well, it, the quantity, quality, efficacy game, yes. and what a balance that must be for someone like CNCF putting in the structure to try and That's hard. curate and regulate and, and you know provide some bumpers on the bowling lane, so to speak, of, of yeah. all of these projects. Yeah. Yeah. We thought, like, if anybody thought that the innovation coming from, or the number of services coming from AWS, or Azure, or Google Cloud, or likes of them, is overwhelming, look at the open source. It's even more overwhelming. What's your take on the supply chain discussion? Ooh, more code, more is happening, what are you hearing there? The supply chain from the software yeah, supply chain? Yeah, software supply chain, yeah. security, phase. Are people talking about that? What are you seeing? Yeah, actually, people are talking about that, the creation, uh, the curation, not creation, curation of suppliers of software, I think is best done in the cloud marketplaces. I, um, call me biased or what, you know, but curation of open source is hard. It's hard to know which project to pick, it's hard to know which project will pan out. Many of the good projects don't see the day, light of the day, but some decent ones it like- It becomes a marketing problem. The more it, you have out there, exactly. the right. more you got to get above the noise. Right. And the noise exactly. could be, and you got, you got GitHub stars, you got contributors, you have vanity metrics now coming in to this that are influencing what's real. But sometimes the best project could have smaller groups. Yeah, exactly. And another controversial thing, just a little bit I will say that, is that there's the economics of the practitioner, right? I usually talk about that, and the economics of the, the enterprise, right? So practitioners in our world, in software world especially, right, in systems world, but practitioners are changing jobs every two to three years. And number of developers doubles every three years. That's the stat I've seen from Uncle Bob, he's the authority on that software side of things. Wow. So that means there's a lot more new entrants. That means a lot of churn. So who is watching out for the enterprise, enterprises economics, you know, like, are we creating stable enterprises? How stable are our operations? On, a side note to that, most of us see the software as like one band, which is not true. When we talk about all these roles and personas, somebody's writing software for, for core layer, which is the infrastructure part. Somebody's writing business applications, somebody's writing you know, systems of record, some, somebody's writing systems of differentiation, we talk about those things. We need to distinguish between those and have principle-based technology consumption, which I usually write about and All I right, will so bottom line, in your opinion, about it. in your opinion, yeah. what's the top story here at KubeCon? Top story is? Headline. Yeah. The, the headline, okay. 
the open source cannot be ignored. That's the headline. And what should pe people be paying attention to? If there's a trend coming out, see any kind of trends coming out or any kind of signal, what, what do you see that people should pay attention to? You have to put the, the top the sig two, three The things. signal is that, that if you are a big shop, like you need to know, assess your like, capacity to absorb open source. You need to be certain size to absorb the open source. If you are below that threshold, I mean, we can talk about that some other time, like what is that th threshold? I will suggest you to go with the managed services from somebody, whoever is providing those managed services around open source, like, so managed Kubernetes, right? So from, take it from AWS, Google Cloud, or Azure, or IBM, or anybody, right? So, use the open source as managed offering rather than doing it yourself, because doing it yourself is a lot more heavy lifting. Um, I, I, there are so many thoughts coming to All my right. mind. It's Savannah, overloaded. I got to ask you, what's your report? You have some swag. What's yeah. the swag I, look like I here? I do just as serious of a report as you do <laughs> on, on the show floor. But I do, so you know, I come from a marketing background and as I, I know that Lisa does as well. And one of the things that I think about that we touched on in this is, is you know, canceling the noise or standing out from the noise. And, and on a show floor, that's actually a huge challenge for these startups, especially yeah. when you're up against a rancher or companies or a Cisco with a very large budget. And yeah. let's say you've only got a couple grand for an activation here, like most of my clients. That's how I ended up in the Q County because someone was here with the client before. So there actually was a booth over there and I, they didn't quite catch me enough, but they had noise canceling headphones. So if you just wanted to take a minute on the show floor and just not hear anything, which I thought was a little bit clever, but going to take you through some of my favorite swag from today. And, and to all the vendors, you know, this is why you should really put some thought into your swag. You never know when you're going to end up on the queue. So since most swag is injection molded plastic that's going to end up in the landfill, I really appreciate that Garden has given all of us a potable plant. And even the packaging is plantable, which is very cool. exciting. So most sustainable swag goes to Garden. Well done. <laughs> Rep, uh, Replicated, I believe is their name. They do a really good job every year. They had some very funny pins that say a word that I'm not going to say live on television. But they have created, they brought two things for us. Yeah, it is Replicated. A little etch sketch for your inner child, which is very nice. And given that we are in Detroit, we are in Motor City, we are in the home of Ford, we had Ford on the show. I love that they have done the custom K8s uh, Keychains oh, in the blue oval logo. Oh, like Ford's we right were, behind us, by the way. And they are on the cube. You yeah, guys yeah, interviewed yeah. them. We had them on earlier. GitLab taking it one level more personal and actually giving out digital portraits <laughs> today, yeah, cool. which is quite fun. GitLab has multiple booths here. They actually IPO'd while they were on the show floor at KubeCon 2021, which is fun to see that whole gang again. And then last but not least, really embracing the ship wheel logo of Kubernetes is the Robusta crew that is giving out bucket hats. And if you check out my Twitter at Savvy Savvy, you can see me holding the ship wheel that they're letting everyone pose with. So we are all in on Kubernetes at KubeCon 2022, that's for sure. Yeah. And this is only day one, guys. We've got three. I want to get one of those hats. We, we need to, we need a group photo. We get here, right? <laughs> By the end of Friday, we will have a beverage and hats on to sign off. <laughs> that's, that's my word, if I can convince John. John, what's your takeaway? You guys did a great, um, kind of uh, kick off about last week or so, about what you were excited about, what your thoughts were going to be. Yep. We're only on day one, there's been thousands of people here, we've had great conversations with yep. contributors, the community. What's your take on day one? What's, well, your, what's yeah. your tagline? Well, Savannah and I had it, we, we were talking about what we might see, and I think we, we were right, I think we had it right. There's going to be a lot more people than there were last year. Okay, check. <laughs> and that's definitely true. Yeah. We're in person. Which is refreshing. I was very surprised about the mask mandate. That kind of caught me I off was guard. Because yeah. um, yeah. I've been comfortable without the mask. I'm not a mask person. Um, but I had to wear it and I was like, ah, mask. But I understand, I support that, but whatever. It's it was, corporate it was, travel it policy, like, you know yeah. that's what it is. And then, you know, they, I thought they did an okay job with the gates, but it wasn't slow like last time. Um, but on the content side, definitely point. Kubernetes security, top line, headline, Kubernetes, at scale, security, that's, that's to me the bumper sticker. Top things to pay attention to. The supply chain and the role of Docker 
and the WebAssembly was a surprise. You're starting to see containers ecosystem coming back to, uh, I won't say tension, growth in the functionality of containers, because they have to solve the security problem in the container images. Okay, you got scanning technology, so it's a little bit in the weeds, but there's a huge movement going on to fix that problem, to scale it so it's not a problem area. Contain, and then Docker's done a great job with productivity, interview Scott um, Johnston, over a hundred million dollars in revenue so far. That's my number, they have not publicly said that, that's what I'm reporting from sources, um, extremely well financially, and, and they love that's their cool. business model. They make productivity for developers. That's a scoop, that's new that's information. That's a nice scoop, we just dropped so that on the kid casually. If you're watching, then pay attention to that. But that, that's proof. But guess what, Red Hat's got developers too. Yes. Other people have to, so developers going to go with where it's the best. Yeah. Developers are voting with their code, they're voting with their feet. You will see the winners with the developers, and that's what we've talked about. Well, and the companies are catering to the developers. Savannah and I had a great conversation with Ford, yeah. You, saw, you showed their fantastic oh, yeah. swag. There's an E-Ford EV right behind us. They were talking about the, all the cultural changes that they've really focused on to cater towards the developers. The developers becoming the influencers, as you say, but to see a company that is as, as history as yeah, Ford yeah. Motor Company and what they're doing to attract and retain developer talent was impressive and honestly that surprised me. Yeah. And, and their head of dev relations has been working for Ford for 29 years. Yeah. Which, I mean, first of all, most companies on the show floor haven't been around for 29 years. Right. But what I love is when you put community first, you get employees to stick around. And I think community is one of the biggest yeah. themes here at KubeCon. Agree. Yeah, my, my favorite story that surprised me and was cool was the Red Hat Lockheed Martin interview yes. where they had edge deployments with micro edge. Like Microshift. Yeah, Microshift. New yes. projects. Yes. Under, there's, there are three new projects under. under that was so, CNC. so cool because it was an edge story yeah. in deployment for the military where lives are on the line. They actually had it working. That is a real world example of Kubernetes and tech orchestrating to deploy the industrial edge. And I think that's proof in my mind that Kubernetes and this ecosystem is going to move faster through this next wave. Uh, of growth because once things start clicking, you got hybrid on premise, super cloud, and edge. That was that was my favorite because it was real. That it, was real the story. That it can make is literally life and death on the battlefield. Yeah, that amazing was amazing cool. with what they're doing and what they're. Check out the with Lockheed together. Martin Red Hat Edge story on SiliconANGLE and the press release, all killer. Yeah, another actually. It's impressive. Um, which we knew this was just happening, but I didn't know that it's happening at this scale. Is the FinOps. The FinOps is, is a discipline yeah. uh, which most uh, companies are adopting, bigger companies which are spending a, like hundreds of millions of dollars in cloud. Uh, average si team size of FinOps, uh, for FinOps is seven people, and average number of tools is I think 3.5 or around 3.7 or something like that. Average number of tools they use to control the cost. So FinOps is a very generic term for our viewers. It's not financial operations, it's the financial operations for the cloud cost, you know, containing the cloud cost. So that's the FinOps. Um, that is a very emerging sort of discipline and, uh, to keep an eye on. And well, not only is that important, I talked to well, one of the principals over there, it's growing, and they have real big players in that foundation. They, yeah. Their events are highly attended, uh, it's super important, it's, just, it's the cost side of cloud. And, and of course, you know, everyone wants to know what's going on. Everyone wants to leave their as, as <laughs> Amazon on. Yeah. You don't want to leave the lights on in the cloud, <laughs> as we always say. You never know what the bill's going to look like. The cloud is going to reach a trillion dollars yeah. in the next few years, so we might as well control the cost there. It, yeah. was, it was funny to get the reaction um, I found. I don't know if I was, how I react, I don't know how I felt, but we, we did introduce SuperCloud to a couple of the guests, and a there were a couple reactions. A couple, John. There was a couple, there was a couple. Right. There was a couple, <laughs> a couple reactions. And what I love about SuperCloud is that some people are like, oh, oh, cringing, and some people are like, yeah, go. So, it's a, it's a solid debate. It is it's solid. I saw more in the segments that I did with you together, people leaning in. Yeah. yeah. SuperCloud. We had a couple. We, sums it up. We, had oh. a we had a couple of cringes. <laughs> I won't say their names, but I'll go back and make sure I get. 
I think people get, cringe, get them later. I think people, <laughs> I think people cringe on the on the term, not on the idea. Yeah, you know. So the That's core idea is that yeah. we're building on top of the yeah. cloud. And then, uh, Sharbi, you're gonna like this. I did successfully introduce here on the cube a new term called architectureless. He did. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. And I want to thank yeah. Charles Fitzgerald for that because he called SuperCloud architectureless, and that's exactly the point of SuperCloud. If you have a great coding environment, you shouldn't have to do an architecture to do. You just code and let the architecture of the SuperCloud make it happen. And of course, Brian Gracely, who will be on tomorrow at his Cloudcast, said SuperCloud enables super services. SuperCloud enables what? Super services. Super Because the, the microservices underneath the covers have to be different, high performing, automated. So again, the debate ensues and the goal is to keep it open and that's our, that's our goal. But we had a lot of fun with that. It was fun <laughs> to po poke the bear it's, a little well, bit. It's wrong. interesting to see just how people respond to it too right. yeah. with you throwing yeah, it out there it, so consistently. You want to poke the bear, get a conversation going. You know, Let, yeah. it, let it roll, uh, we'll see. It's been positive so far. The, the, well, I had a discussion uh, um, outside, somebody who is from Ford but not attending this conference and they have been there for a while. I, I it just, some a moment hit me, like me, like said, people, okay, technologists are horizontal. The coders are horizontal. They will go from Ford to GM to Chrysler to Bank of America to, you know, GE, whatever, you know, like cross vertical, within vertical, different vendors. So, but the culture of a company is local. Right. Right, Ford has been building cars for uh, forever. They sort of democratize it, they commercialize it, right? But they have some uh, intense culture. It's hard to change those cultures. And how do we bring in the new thinking? What is, what approach that should be? Is it a sandbox approach for yeah. like putting new sensors on the car? They have to compete with the likes of Tesla, right? Yeah. But they cannot if they are afraid of diluting their existing market yeah. or if they, they are afraid of failure there, right? So awesome. it's very tricky. Great stuff. Sorry, great to have you on as our CUBE analyst, breaking down the stories. We'll document that, we'll roll out a post on it. Lisa Savannah, let's wrap up the show for day one. We got day two and three. We'll start with you. What's your summary, quick bumper sticker? What's the today's show all about? I'm a community first gal, and this entire experience is about community. And it's really nice to see the community come together, celebrate that, share ideas, and to have our community together on stage. Yeah, to me, to me it was all real, it's happening, Kubernetes, cloud native at scale, it's happening, it's real, and we see proof points, and we're going to have a totally. faster time to value, it's going to accelerate faster from here. The proof points, the impact is real. And we saw that in some amazing stories. And this is just day one of the Cube's coverage. Darby, final word on this segment. What's well said, Lisa. Yeah, I, I think I'll I repeat what I said like, I think it's, uh, eight, nine years back uh, at a Rack Space Conference. <laughs> Open source is amazing for one biggest reason. It gives the ability to the developing nations to be at somewhat at par with the devel developed nations. And, and those people to lift up their masses through the automation, because when automation happens, the corruption goes down and the economy blossoms. And I think uh, it's great and, and we need to do more in it, but we have to be careful about the supply chains around the software so the so our systems are secure and they are robust. Yeah, okay. that's it Okay. For me. For Sarbi <laughs> and my two great co-hosts, Lisa Martin, Savannah Peterson, I'm John Furrier, you're watching theCUBE, day one in, a, in the books. We'll see you tomorrow, day two, KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, live in Detroit. Thanks for watching.